Coming up on Jerusalem Dateline, the end of an era. Pat Robertson passes into eternity at the age of 93. A tribute to a pioneer in broadcasting and the founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Regent University, Operation Blessing, the American Center for Law and Justice, and more. We'll hear from family members, government and ministry leaders from around the world about how one man's life impacted millions on this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. The Christian Broadcasting Network is mourning the loss of its founder and chairman, Pat Robertson, who died in his home on June 8th, surrounded by family at the age of 93. Pat was a leader in the worlds of broadcasting, Christian ministry, education, politics, news, and law. He was an accomplished visionary, but at his core, he loved God with all his heart and exhorted others to do the same. Here's a moment from a CBN week of prayer five years ago. What is our obligation? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength? That's the number one commandment. God says this, because you have set your love on me, therefore I will. I will rescue him. I will protect him. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, folks, that's the reward of loving God. Throughout his adult life, Pat took risks that might have seemed wild in the world's eyes, but in retrospect, paid off. His was a journey that affected his home state of Virginia, the U.S., and the world for great good. John F. Kennedy was president when Pat Robertson, an ex-Marine and the son of a U.S. senator, opened a bank account with $3 and created a broadcast network that would one day reach six continents. In 1966, he began hosting one of the longest-running programs in television history. And from the set of the 700 Club, Robertson transformed Christian television. Oh, we've got a wonderful audience and a wonderful program. Pat had a, a heart to see people, I think, come to faith in Christ. He had a, he had a heart for taking the gospel and presenting the gospel and uh, using television as a means to do this. Uh, and he was an innovator. And God, I think God just blessed him and used him because his heart was right. By 1988, he was running for president. When you think of Pat Robertson, I think the, one of the major lessons you learn is that if, if you have a dream, go after it. Even if you fall short of it, to go after the presidency against all odds. Robertson expanded his political influence, bringing thousands of evangelicals into the process with the founding of the Christian Coalition. He also started the American Center for Law and Justice to protect religious freedoms. Pat has always had this vision to go where a lot of people don't go. And you know, when you do that, sometimes you're criticized by people. No question. I, I was always impressed with Pat and uh, his boldness. And he did it in a nice way. And, uh, you know, he wasn't offensive, but he just spoke the truth. And that offended people. When you speak the truth, that offends people. But that's okay. Robertson received both praise and heavy criticism for some of his political and social comments. But his humanitarian efforts didn't make as many headlines. Through Operation Blessing, he helped millions of poor and needy in every corner of the planet. The ministry has delivered more than a billion pounds of food to hungry Americans and assisted the victims of disasters such as Hurricane Katrina. All these homes represented dreams, represented vision, represented the hopes and aspirations of people, and it's all gone. The late Jack Hayford spoke of the ministry's deep and lasting effect. Just raw Christian compassion, always attended with a remembrance that we're being compassionate in order to show Jesus and the testimony of the cross. And that's been fairly low profile in his ministry in many people's minds, but it, globally it has been powerfully impacting. And he helped other ministries, including Samaritan's Purse, a ministry in Africa started by Billy Graham's son, Franklin. 
Pat Robinson invested in other people, uh, in other ministries. Uh, a lot of people don't do that. They focus on what they do, but they don't want to invest in anyone else. Pat invested in other people. Uh, he invested in, in my life, Samaritan's Purse. Well, let's put it this way. He was an investor. He invested in God's work. One of his longest lasting legacies may be Regent University, producing leaders in government, law, the arts, and education. Pat served as chancellor of Regent, even after stepping down in 2021 as host of the 700 Club for 55 years. The following year, his beloved wife, Dee Dee, went home to be with the Lord. Despite losing the love of his life and suffering several health setbacks, Pat's faith, obedience, and love for God never wavered. What really makes him a giant is that he never pointed toward himself, but to the cross. At the heart of it all, his invitation to pray. Lord Jesus, right now, I confess to you that I'm not ready, Jesus. I surrender to you now, Lord, and I take you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Coming up, one fateful day in June 1967 changed history and fulfilled prophecy and established a link between Israel and CBN that continues to this day. Pat never wavered in his commitment to stand with Israel, and he made it a cornerstone of his vision for the Christian Broadcasting Network. Take a look. On June 5, 1967, the Six-Day War began, and Israel would reunite Jerusalem under Jewish rule for the first time in 2,000 years. On the same day, CBN broke ground on the renovations for the old studio at WYAH. Israel is the chosen people. They are the chosen nation. And so in 1967, uh, for CBN to break ground at the same time the Six-Day War was for Dad of enormous significance that the two are now tied together. That bond was strengthened when Pat traveled to Israel in 1974 to interview Prime Minister Itzhak Rabin. What would you ask of the United States? I believe if uh, one wants to see any future to the free world in the right sense, to the democratic way of life, I believe without strong America, the future might be not as hopeful as it can be was a strong man. He knew that if America was strong, Israel would be taken care of. Well, I went back to our group that was with me up on the Mount of Olives where we were staying, and that night I made a vow that I personally, in any ministry that I was associated with, regardless of the cost, that we were going to stand with Israel. For this area, let's, let's, let's do that for the whole, just lay our hands on it. Pat began praying for a way to broadcast into Israel. Wonderful people. Years later, he was offered a TV station in southern Lebanon. And here was one on the border of Israel, and it was being given to me. But I knew that I shouldn't put my hand on something in that volatile region without it being cleared for sure by the Lord. Pat prayed for a sign for confirmation, specifically that he would receive something of gold as evidence that he should take the station. Days went by, but no gold, until he checked his private mailbox. Inside, there was a letter, and there was several pictures of gold coins, 24 karat gold, struck in a mold by Pablo Picasso. And he said, I want to make these available to CBN. That was the evidence. So I said, all right, we've heard from the Lord. And so we got the station. Of Pat Robinson, in the name of Messiah Jesus, I'm pleased to hand you the keys to Jesus Star of Hope television station right here in the Holy Land. 
Spring of 1982, Middle East Television, a CBN-owned and operated Channel 12 TV station, was put on the air. With access to 12 nations in the region, METV used popular programming like NFL football, soccer, and the hit TV show, Touched by an Angel, to attract viewers. People then stayed tuned for the 700 Club. METV was the pioneer. Nobody was doing that. And it had awesome impact among the Arab-speaking population to the north towards Lebanon and to the east of Syria and Jordan and across Israel. Pat also enjoyed warm friendships with many leaders in the Holy Land who saw his loyalty and commitment to supporting Israel. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren, a frequent guest on the 700 Club, remembers how Pat stood with Israel. For the state of Israel, we, where can we begin to talk about? We're talking about support for Israel during some of our hardest times, support for Israel's right to defend itself, our right to exist as a Jewish state. I remember during the dark days of the Second Intifada, 2000 to 2004, 2005, when there were no tourists in the state of Israel, the hotels were empty, the flights were empty. It was Pat Robinson and uh, the evangelical communities uh, who revered him, uh, that kept support for Israel and our economy uh, going through those very dark days. Um, we owe him an historic debt. I owe him a personal debt. And for that reason, I will say most emphatically, may his memory be blessed forever. In 1974 in the Mount of Olives, Pat vowed to the Lord he would always stand with Israel and the Jewish people. Well, he certainly kept his vow to the Lord, and we are the grateful recipients. Jerusalem Deputy Mayor Flor Hassan Nahum remembers Pat's friendship and love for the city of Jerusalem. We had no better friends than uh, leaders like Pat Robertson for the city of Jerusalem for advocating for the embassy move, for advocating for the full recognition of Jerusalem as a capital city of the state of Israel and the Jewish people. He saw us as no less than a holy proof that God exists, the plight of the Jewish people, how we got here for him was nothing short of a miracle. In 2010, the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem presented Pat with a Lifetime Achievement Award for his unwavering support for Israel. He stood up for Israel and, and made that commitment to stand with this nation uh, well before a lot of the major Christian leaders did back in the 70s. I think Israelis know that he was one of the pillars and the pioneers and patriarchs of Christian support for Israel today. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu tweeted, he was a great friend of Israel, second to none. Over the decades, he led millions of his followers in supporting the Jewish state. I will fondly remember our many meetings together, his warmth and steadfast friendship, which stood the test of time and circumstance. There was nobody who loved Israel in the Christian world more than Pat Robertson. I don't think anyone had more influence on the Christian world. Because Pat Robertson had built CBN from scratch, that gave him a reach. It gave him an influence that was outsized, I think, any other person in the pro-Israel Christian space. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be forever grateful for him. Up next, the dramatic story behind CBN's first ever broadcast, when everything went wrong minutes before going on air, God stepped in and performed miracles. It took great vision on Pat's part to begin broadcasting on Channel 27 in Portsmouth in 1961. He literally started with nothing. But he often quoted from the book of Zechariah, despise not the day of small beginnings. With some early donations, Pat got the FCC license for Channel 27 with the call letters W-Y-A-H, the first three letters of the Hebrew name of God. With that, CBN became the first television station in America licensed to broadcast 50% or more religious programming. The studio was far from being ready and Pat still owed RCA $5,000. But that didn't stop him from scheduling CBN's inaugural broadcast for October 1st, 1961. I didn't have the money on the day we were supposed to go on the air. 
And I opened the Bible, and my eyes fell on the psalm. It said, the salvation of the Lord is at hand. And I thought, it's coming. And I just began to praise God. And on the way to church that day, I encountered a friend, and I said, come over to the station. We're going on the air today. And he stopped by, and 15 minutes before 1 o'clock, when we were supposed to go on the air, I said, look, I'm short $5,000. And he bowed his head, put his head in his hand. He said, I'll let you have the five. And I said, OK. We're ready to go. Of course, the engineer didn't believe we'd get it, so he wasn't ready. <laughs> By 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the engineer had cobbled together the broken equipment and the Christian Broadcasting Network made its television debut. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network, presents the following program. It was a snowy black and white image of Pat preaching the gospel in front of a dry rotted curtain and a cardboard cross. My church was there in that little station. It didn't look too impressive really to tell you the truth. We had this tiny transmitter and I didn't know if we were on the air, we didn't have a monitor. My husband said, I'll go down to the drugstore. They've got a TV and I'll check and see. He came back and said, we know you're at least getting to the corner, which was less than a block away. It wasn't very far. But it was a start, one that was riddled with challenges. It was survival. Can we get enough money to pay the bills? Are we reaching anybody? Can I get a new camera? Can I make that camera work? Will the transmitter stay on the air? Will you know it blow up in my face and do I have the tubes to fill it? And always pressure, always pressure. You know, it, it, the Lord, when you're walking by faith, it, it isn't necessarily easy. I often marvel when Pat tells the stories of the early beginnings, I think, I don't think I would have had the chutzpah to do some of those things that he did. With great admiration, I say that. Some who knew Pat well and will feel his passing keenly are the reporters and producers who worked with him for years, some for decades. Dale Hurd first met Pat working for another network as he covered him on the campaign trail running for president. I remember being so impressed with his breadth of knowledge about policy issues, and that was the beginning of my coming to CBN News. Gary Lane was his senior campaign press secretary and remembers a tough day on the trail when he asked Pat why he was running. He said, because God has told me to do that. And he said, I can't expect Christians to get involved in the political process if I'm not willing to put myself out there and do the same. George Thomas traveled to India with Pat and remembers incredible ministry, including speaking to a crowd of half a million people in New Delhi. Yeah, I'm fixing the mic and he says, pray for me, I'm nervous. And I said, sure, and I put my hand on him, on his chest, and I just prayed with him. And then a few minutes later, he goes up and gives this powerful message. And after, you know, half an hour, you know, 45 minutes of preaching, half the crowd give their lives to Jesus Christ. And it's a powerful moment. Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell says Pat's vow to stand by Israel in the 1970s not only endured for his lifetime, but made a profound mark around the world and at CBN. Pat kept that vow, and I believe the CBN Global family has been blessed because of Pat's steadfastness and faithfulness to stand with Israel and the Jewish people. But perhaps Pat's biggest legacy for reporters and producers was his life of faith. When I think about Pat, I think about how he listened to God. He was always listening to God. When I think of Pat and his life and his legacy, I think of what the Bible calls an oak of righteousness. Um, giving shade to generations. I believe Pat's legacy centers on the idea of his obedience and also his audacious faith. It's what led him to do foolish things in the eyes of the world, like starting a Christian broadcasting ministry with no experience, with little support, and barely any finances. Reporter Abigail Robertson, who is also Pat's granddaughter, says this giant faith never wavered, even in his last moments. We walked in the door, and it was really the first time that he acknowledged that um, he was nearing home. He was probably heading to heaven soon. And he, we walk in and he goes, I've been asking the Lord, what do I need to tell them? What do I need to share with them? And he just looked at us and he said, trust God. 
God is always faithful. Never, ever, ever has he failed me. Never, ever, ever has he let me down. Still ahead, Pat leaves us with a legacy that has touched millions around the globe. He shares an intimate look at what it means to be a servant of God when we come back. It was always a thrill in these last few years to catch Pat in a reflective moment. Here are two of those moments, one when Pat's great friend Scott Ross was asking about his book, I Have Walked with the Living God, and the other from an interview in recent years. Pat Robertson, I have walked with the living God. Right. Now, I know someone wrote a book years ago, I Walked with God. Yeah. But you walk with the living, living God. God. That's right. What's the difference? <laughs> well, the God that, that I know is the one who's with me every day, every minute. In Him we live and move and have our being, and that's the idea. I mean, He's, he's not far from any of us because in Him we live, and uh, with Him, He's a living presence in my life. Like, like Adam, you know, he walked with God in the cool of the evening. It stands out above all else is that God is faithful. He absolutely is faithful. He absolutely does what He says He can do. We can absolutely trust Him. God is alive. He is present. If one thing I could tell people, you can trust the Lord. I think that more than anything else is that God is faithful. He does what He says He'll do. Pat's life and godly example affected us all here in the Jerusalem Bureau and me personally. We love Pat. We will miss him, but because of our Christian faith and trust in Jesus, we believe we will see him again and believe he has already heard those words from the Savior he loved with all his heart. Well done, good and faithful servant.